Hi friends. When you're a YouTuber, you get all these emails from people who want to send you products and then have you review them on their channel. And as you probably know, I'm not really into that. The other day I got this email. These people wanted to send me four knives, made in China knives. I mean, they were decently expensive, 40 to $50 each and do a review on them. Sorry, not going to do it, folks. One reason for that is that I want to bring you all really valuable content. But the other reason is that there's an overall message that I have with this channel. And if you stick around to the end of this video, you're going to find that this is not just a knife review that I'm doing today. This has a message about the way we can all change the world through some of our actions and habits sat down to my morning work a couple of months ago, opened my email, and there was a, <laughs> a request to send me something. But this was not the usual one. This was not a form letter. This was a personalized email from Mark. And Mark is a knife maker in the UK. He is doing something very, very different. And as soon as I started hearing about what he was doing, and as soon as I saw his knives, I got really excited. And I thought, this is a video I want to do. And there's a special story here. Full disclosure and possible conflict of interest, my friends, Salient is giving anyone that comes from this video a 5% discount on one of their knives. You can use this code. And they have offered our family a growing 5% each time discount towards one of their knives for everybody that comes and uses that code. That would mean that someday maybe we can get another salient knife and we would have one to pass down to each of our girls. That being said, I must point out that when I do a review for something, I'm not going to give people a good review just because they sent me something. So this was kind of a risk on Mark's part, superficially, because he could have sent it and I could have not been impressed, but I think he knew because they are making something so high quality, so beautiful, that there was no way I wasn't going to love this knife. You like it? Yes, it's very sharp and nice. It's got a nice feel to it. This is a salient Canterbury and this is a knife to be reckoned with on so many levels. It's utility, it's functionality, and it's beauty. The story begins in an almost tragic way. In 2014, Mark's wife, who had beaten cancer once, had a recurrence of her cancer, and it was found to be at stage four. As you know, that's really, really bad. But, almost miraculously, and there's a lot to be said for, for good attitude and hopefulness and modern medical science, she came through. And during this whole time, Mark was obviously in a really, really rough place and trying to fill his mind with something. And it was during this time also that he met Stephen Wade Cox. Now, if you're into knife making, you've probably heard of Stephen. Stephen started meeting with a group of people and instilling in them the passion and the skills of knife making. It was a little group called the Knife Club, and it became a really important part of Mark's life until two years later when Stephen had a cardiac arrest and passed away very suddenly. For Mark, this was devastating, and all the light kind of went out of his passion for knife making. But there was a special alchemical mix happening here. When you see the transience of life and you see like in the case of his wife the power of life something can happen inside of us where we start to recognize that dreams are important that the way we live life is important that it's not enough just to walk through life in kind of a blind stupor and not live our passions so it was that during a camping trip, Mark met Cameron. 
Cameron was filled with that youthful passion of wanting to do something meaningful with his life. The two of them started talking. The passion for knives was rekindled in Mark, thankfully. And the two of them together decided to start Salient Knives. Here's their whole team, Cameron, Mark, and their hand engraver, Greg. And they wanted to form a knife making company that was based on three principles. The first was that they wanted to create a knife that was beyond anything they had experienced before. This was a knife that was super, super functional and also beautiful. They wanted to create something that could be an heirloom that you would want to have for yourself, but that you knew you could pass down to your children, to your grandchildren, that it was built to last, and that it would be one of those items that stories can be built around. That you remember camping trips, you remember adventures, and they become infused into the knife, soaking into the steel, wending their way into the wood. The second was that everyone has to eat. In our modern times, often the goal of a business is to try to cut costs as much as possible, and sell the thing for the highest price that people will pay, and then you're gonna make your money. And the only important thing becomes making your money. In this case, they wanted their suppliers to be fairly paid. They wanted themselves as the makers to be fairly paid. Everything that goes into this knife, the box is handmade, that person to be fairly paid. And for us, the customer, when we get a knife, to feel like even though these are gonna be much more expensive than a production knife, that we have spent our money in a way that we are getting more value than that money held. This was about a fairness to everybody, making sure that in the end, everybody's smiling, not just the person who sold the knife. The last principle I could really relate to because Mirabelle with her hobby horses has this same one. When she makes a hobby horse, when Mark and Cameron make a knife, they wanna make sure that when this particular knife leaves their shop, they're sad to see it go. That they have put themselves into the making of each one so deeply that they're attached to it. Mirabelle certainly feels that. It's, <laughs> I mean, these horses all get kisses goodbye from us when they leave. And the knife, it's the same thing. Let me show you this knife up close and I think you're gonna see why I was so impressed and felt so incredibly honored that they were just going to send me one of these. It came in a handmade box. Who does things like this anymore? There was a letter from Mark and Cameron. A certificate of authenticity. And, of course, the knife. The quality begins with the sheath. Look at this thick leather construction. Traditional and super functional. I want to show you how thoughtfully designed the sheath is. Do not be stupid. What I'm about to do with these knives, never do this with any knife. So a well-designed synthetic sheath, we know is gonna hold that knife in there really tight. Again, never do this, you guys. <laughs> so it's not gonna come out. And a well-designed one. Obviously some can be loose. But on a leather sheath, you would not expect this to happen. At the same time, I like to have a knife easy and at the ready. And I learned soon after I received this knife that I can pull it a bit out from its sheath. It's still in there firmly, and yet very easy to reach down and bring it out 
Every knife is individually numbered and the fit and finish is impeccable. The blade itself is gorgeous, with the option to get it laser engraved as mine is. They offered to custom engrave anything I wanted, but I chose their salient logo as I found it so beautiful. They even offer hand engraving by one of the world's most skilled engravers. This blade is thick and robust, as you can see when we compare it to a Swedish Holtzbruck axe. Amazingly, even though this is a smaller knife, the blade is the same thickness as the axe. Yet the bevel they've used gives the salient a razor edge. As such, it's a knife suitable for many tasks. These two gentlemen have a dream of making these full time. Right now, they're still working regular jobs and doing this on the side, putting their whole heart into it. But I would like to help, if I can, in any small way, to help make that dream come true. Now, as promised, they have offered a discount, a 5% discount, to anyone that comes from this video. Just use this discount code rewild and they will know that you came from here. There's something deeper here that I'd like to touch on before we say goodbye today. And that is the importance of handmade things. It is our collective actions as human beings that make the world what it is. So if we go around and we are spending our money always on the cheapest things, that creates a world. Every time we do that, we contribute to that world a world of cheap, disposable things. And this holds for so many things in life. When we look around us, do we want a world of cheap, nearly slave labor that creates goods that fall apart after three, four uses? Or do we want a world where we remember that there was a way when we made things by hand when we made things that would last for generations. For me, that's the world I would rather live in. I am certainly not perfect at it. I buy cheap things. And sometimes that's just a matter of money. So many of us are struggling financially and don't have hundreds of dollars to spend on something like a knife. But do I save up and I buy one, one item, that is going to last, that's going to be real. We can ask this question of quality with clothing, with food, with an ax that we're gonna purchase, with shoes, so many places, really anytime that we spend money. What would happen if we just stop and we say, all right, am I gonna buy this cheap version or might I look at some higher quality versions and think about getting something that is either a production piece that's made with more heart or something that's actually handmade. So I'd urge you to go to their website. There's a link in the description and check out their knives. See what you think. And if you take nothing else from this video, let's just remember that quality counts. It's not just in things either. 
It's in the quality of our words, our actions, our attitudes, our ideas. How are we going to live today? Are we going to just autopilot through the day? Or are we going to live it with heart, with passion, with quality? Thank you for watching, my friends, as always. And I would love to hear your thoughts in the comments.